But first, some writers say writing is agony. Ford Reiki isn't one of them. Reiki, who grew up in Falmouth and now lives in Freeport, is the author of the new book, A Long, Long Time Ago. And he says putting the book together was a blast. A Long, Long Time Ago tells the story of major rock and roll concerts in Southern Maine from 1955 to 1977. Now, a history of concerts might sound a bit dry, a bit insider-ish, but with anecdotes, photos, and images of tickets and posters, Reiki makes this slice of history come alive. It's not the way you'd expect a history of Maine rock and roll concerts to begin, but this story starts in 1955, when the Maine Turnpike was extended from Portland to Lewiston. That put together 250,000 people within an hour driving distance, seven colleges in that area, and all of a sudden you could put 4,000, 5,000 people under one roof and you, if that put Portland, the, the southern Maine rather, on the map for these concerts or otherwise going to big cities. But the far more important development of 1955 came when this song exploded on the American music scene. When the clock strikes two, three and four, if the band goes down, And just to show you how significant Southern Maine was on the tour, while well, Rock Around the Clock was number one, first rock and roll song ever to be number one on the Billboard National List, Bill Hay and the Comets were on the Ed Sullivan Show on a Sunday. The next Thursday, they were in Old Orchard Beach, Maine. The early rock and roll stars got heavy radio airplay and sold hundreds of thousands of records. But the sound and lighting for their shows were about what you'd expect from a high school garage band. The Beach Boys showed up um, in 1963 at Old Orchard Beach, the first time they played in Maine. They showed up in a station wagon and a Jaguar, and all their gear and their, and their manager and a buddy were in there. That was it. When so Ford Reiche work. started this project, his plan was to do a book featuring concert posters from Southern Maine from this era. It soon became apparent there was a bigger story worth telling about the venues, the DJs, the promoters, all of them in Maine, none of them connected to national companies. These local promoters were really just everyday people. Bobby Selberg worked at Sears for decades and promoted concerts just because he enjoyed it. It was a hobby for him. Rather than playing golf, he promoted concerts, right? He'd rent the hall, he would put an ad in the paper, and you would send $2 to his house in South Portland. 3,000 people would send $2.50 to his mail to his home in South Portland, and his wife would send out the ticket. You got a lot of funny anecdotes in the book. Alice Cooper, 1972, playing in Portland. Alice Cooper was met at the jet port by black stretch limousines, and the band would not get in the vehicles because their contract rider specified white stretch limos. Yeah, there was a certain a certain expectation and, and level of entitlement on some of these bands when they showed up. But that was that was a concert that was put on by um, Art Pito and Rick Scala, who were student volunteer concert promoters at the University of Southern Maine. Flip through the pages of the book and you're likely to be amazed at the future rock and roll legends who played in small venues. Jimi Hendrix at the Lewiston Armory, ticket price $2.50. The Eagles as an opening act at the Portland Expo. Ike and Tina Turner at the Gorham campus of the University of Maine at Portland Gorham. That Ike and Tina Turner concert, again, back to your, back to your comment about this being a, not entirely a polished operation back then, uh, two of their band members had been arrested the night before in New York, and they didn't even know they were missing until, until everyone in all the gear showed up in Portland, and they had two roadies play on stage musical instruments that night to fill the gap. One hit song, just one, could make a band's fortunes soar. The Supremes. Supremes played in Old Orchard Beach in, I guess it was 1964, um, and they w were unknowns. And a month later, they had a number one hit, and of course you couldn't, you know, they were playing any place they wanted to after that. From the performers you really wish you could have seen file, there might be one group that stands out. She's a killer queen.
By all accounts, it was a night to remember. Queen at the Lewiston Armory in 1975. As active as Lewiston was with music, they, they also had a, a series of behavior problems. <laughs> the Queen concert ended with what some city officials characterized as a riot. 25 people got arrested. Cops got harassed. Uh, the cops had to fish somebody out of a basketball net. Uh, there were two people um, having sex in an all-glass phone booth. The book ends in 1977, when concert tours were becoming big business, run almost exclusively by national promoters with deep pockets. Not coincidentally, the Cumberland County Civic Center opened in Portland in 1977, bringing with it the most popular acts in the country, Boston, Jackson Brown, Cher and Greg Allman, and more. The era of major acts playing for local promoters in modest-sized venues had come to an end. The year before the Civic Center opened, in all of Southern Maine, 15 big concerts. The year the Civic Center opened, three times that, 45 big concerts, and it was just big act after big act. Are we baby boomers being too nostalgic and looking back with rose-tinted glasses when we think that that was maybe a better era for music? Um, it's entirely possible. I keep checking myself on that. This is the music that people still listen to. And when I was growing up, I didn't listen to music that was 25 or 30 or 40 years old, but then our children and, and younger people are doing just that. I think it's a timeless period for music. It certainly, um, certainly was a, an important um, and dramatic change culturally. One more story from the book, Aerosmith doing a college concert in Southern Maine. The contract for the band insisted on a full turkey dinner. <laughs> the student volunteer went to Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Took care of the problem there. Oh all my gosh. the images in the book, and they are wonderful. Photos, posters, tickets, mm. all from Maine. The YouTube video that we used is not from Maine, but everything else, everything else that you saw in that story and everything in the book is from Maine, which is part of its charm. It's so cool, and I cannot be the only person thinking right now, I was born in the wrong decade. <laughs> what the heck, man? There yeah. were some big names. Queen, that's my favorite band of all time. And yeah. to think that I could have seen them for like two bucks. And one other note, what? all of the proceeds from a long, long time ago will be donated to the Maine Historical Society. That is fantastic. All right, up next.